For our second lesson in 4.3, we're going to be looking at analyzing the graph of a linear real-world situation. And with that, we're hopefully going to learn to graph a real-world scenario, and that will be found just in quadrant one, and interpret data from the graph. So that's our lesson. That's our goal. We're going to take a look at a couple examples and see how we can do those things given a real-world scenario. For our first example, we have the scenario, Kent has a weekly goal of burning 2,400 calories by exercising. The equation y equals negative 300x plus 2,400 represents the number of calories, which is y, Ken has to burn after x hours of exercise, which burns 300 calories per hour. Now in this scenario, in this example, we want to do two things. First, we want to be able to actually graph this scenario, we have our equation here, y equals negative 300x plus 2400, and we want to graph that using quadrant one, that's the upper right quadrant of our coordinate grid. And then we also want to be able to analyze and find some information or some data from the graph that we create. So let's start off by graphing it, and then we'll go ahead and we will interpret some of the data that we see in the graph. So I went ahead and I drew my coordinate grid only using the first quadrant. Again, that's the upper right, upper right quadrant of our coordinate plane. On the left side, our y-axis, we have the calories remaining. So that's the number of calories that he still has to burn. And on the x-axis, we have the amount of time that he has to burn those calories. So I'm going to rewrite our equation. We have y equals negative 300 x plus 2400. Now, just like in our 3.1a, I'm sorry, 4.3a, we want to identify our slope and our y-intercept. So if I rewrite y equals mx plus b, we can see that our value for m is going to be negative 300, which I'm going to write as a fraction, negative 300 over 1. And our value for b is going to be 2400. Now obviously with these values, negative 300 for our slope and 2400 for our y-intercept, we're going to have to change up the scale of our graph a little bit. So usually we only count up by ones, but here we're actually counting up by three hundreds for our y-axis. You see that every grid line represents a value of 300 calories, and then every grid line on our x-axis represents one hour. So our first order pair, our first point, still goes for our y-intercept, which is 2,400. So we're not counting up 2,400 lines. That would never work. That would take way too long and to use too much paper. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to count based on the grid lines. And we see that when we count up 2,400 units, we're actually going up, only going up to here on our graph. Okay, We have our grid line here at 2400 so that's where our first point goes now first points here for our y-intercept now we're using our slope continuing from this point our slope is negative 300 over 1 and we need to remember that given the scale that we have on the y-axis every grid line represents 300 units so when I go down one grid line, I'm actually going down 300 units. So when I rise down 300, I'm actually going just down one grid line. Okay, I'm rising down 300 units, but only one grid line. So I rise down one grid line, and then I still run one, because my scale down here is still going by ones. My scale here is going by 300s. My scale here is going by ones. So I rise down 300, I'm sorry, from here, I rise down 300 and then run 1 for my next point. And I can do that again and again. Again, rise down 1, rise down 300 units but one grid line and run right 1. And I'm not going to do the opposite of that this time because we're only focused on the information that's in the first quadrant. Okay, We can't have negative time so we can't go into the second quadrant at all. So we're saying just in the first quadrant. And so what we want to do is we want to extend our line. Usually when we draw a line of a graph, we extend the line p 
past the points and then draw arrows at both sides. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to connect the line on both axes. So I'm going to line up my points and draw my line like that. Okay? And that is the graph of my line. Now what we can interpret from this graph is that if he hasn't exercised for any hours, he hasn't done any exercise yet, he still has 2,400 2, calories that he wants to burn as part of his goal. But then we see as he works out, he has fewer and fewer calories that he has to reach in order to get his target. And so after eight hours of exercise, we see that he has reached his goal. He has no calories remaining. We know that this is the origin, so that's zero, zero. So when he gets to eight hours, he has zero calories that he has left to burn on his plan. So let's analyze our graph a little bit more. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to figure out how many hours of exercise Ken would have remaining if he still had 600 calories left to burn. Ken has 600 calories that he knows that he wants to burn still, and we want to figure out how many hours, how many more hours, or how many hours he has exercised so far. Okay? So in order to do that, we're just gonna we're just gonna make a rectangle with the x and y axis as two parts of our rectangle. We're gonna start at 600. We're gonna trace over to our line, and then we're gonna trace down. So if Ken has exercised for 600, if he has if he has 600 calories left to burn, then we see that he has exercised for six hours, and we can also interpret that he still has to exercise for two more hours in order to reach his goal. Okay? So if he has 600 calories left to burn, we see he's exercised for six hours, and so has two hours left to go. Now, let's say Ken knows that he's exercised for uh, three hours, and we want, he wants to figure out how many more calories he has to burn. So in between the two and the four here, we know that there's going to be a three, so if we want to see how many calories he's burned after three hours, we again can draw a light rectangle up to our line and then over to our y-axis. Halfway between 1,200 and 1,800, we know that that will be 1,500. So after three hours of exercise, Ken still has to burn 1,500 calories. By doing some math, we can see that he's already burned 900 calories and he has 1,500 more to go if he's exercised for three hours. So that's a little bit about how we can analyze a graph. Just by drawing rectangles on our graph, using the x and y axis as sides of our rectangles. So let's say that a few weeks goes by with Ken using that program, and he suddenly realized that he's not burning as many calories per hour as he thought. He learns that he's only burning 200 calories per hour instead of the 300 calories per hour that he had thought. I'm sure that was very disappointing for him, but he keeps at it. He still wants to burn 2,400 calories per week, so he changes his equation to y equals negative 200x plus 2,400. So we're still going to identify our slope and our y-intercept. We have y equals negative 200x plus 2,400. If we need to, we can keep writing y is equal to mx plus b. And in doing so, we recognize that m is equal to negative 200 over 1. And b is still equal to 2400. We're going to start with our y-intercept here. Start with our y-intercept. And we plot that point first, and then we do our slope from there. 2400, we see is going to go... From the origin, we're going to go up to 2400. Is that's where our first point is going to be. Now here's where things might get a little bit more tricky, because our scale here we're still going by 300s, but now our slope we're going down by negative 200 over 1. So what we can do for that is in order to get this so that we have a uh, a slope that we can graph more easily. We can figure out what we need to multiply by, multiply this by 
to match our scale. So we either want this to equal something over um, where we have three, a multiple of 300 here. Now, my suggestion would be to go um, to multiply so that you have a, a whole number here in the denominator and in the numerator. So if we multiply by 1.5, that would give us a whole number of 300 here, but we would have a decimal here. So let's multiply. Let's multiply by 3. By 3 over 3. Okay? So negative 200 times 3 is going to give us negative 600. 1 times 3 is going to give us 3. Basically what I've done is I've kind of unsimplified our slope to give us negative 600 over 3. And so now we're going to be able to graph that much more easily. Because going again, going down by 200, we're not going to be sure exactly where to put our, put our point because it doesn't fall nicely on our grid lines. But going down by 600 and over 3, that's something that we can do. So from here, we're going to go down 600, which is going to be represented by two grid lines from 24 down to 1800, that's 600. And then we run 3 in our scale here, still going by 1s. So we're going to go down our 600 and then run 1, 2, 3 and put our point there. Now if we had tried to graph negative 200 over 1, we could try to go down what we would think to be about 200, which would be about right there, and then run right 1. And it might be close, but we're not sure if it's perfect. By going down 600, this point here, close, but we're not sure if it's exactly right. But this point here, going down by 600 and then to the right 3, we know that it's exactly where we want it to be. So we're continuing from this point here, we're going to go down 600 units again, which is only two grid lines, and then to the right three. So we go down 600, and then right three, and we can do that again, down 600, and right three. Now we have enough points, we can go ahead and graph our line. And it turns out my point that I put here was really pretty close, but we still want to make sure that we're getting our points exactly where we want them to be. We go ahead and draw our line. And we can see that before it was going to take eight hours for Ken to reach his goal when he was burning 300 calories per hour. But now when he's only burning 200 calories per hour, it's going to take him four more hours. It's going to take him 12 hours now to reach his goal of 2,400 calories. So again, let's presume, let's analyze the graph a little bit and let's try it. Let's see if we can figure out, all right, after two hours, no, let's do three hours. How many calories has he burned? So we go to three hours right here. We draw our rectangle going up to here. And we see that he still has 1,800 calories still to go, meaning that he has burned 600. So after three hours time, he has burned 600 calories and he has 600 left, or 1,800 left to go. Now let's say that he has, um, that he wants to burn, that he's burned um, all but 900 calories. So he's gone to here. He's burned all but 900 of his calories, so we draw our line across to here, and then down. Now this one might be a little bit more difficult to say, but we can estimate this to be about 7.5. Okay, it's halfway between where our 7 and our 8 would be, so giving a guess to 7.5 would be absolutely acceptable. Okay, so again, to help us analyze our graph, just draw a rectangle using the the y and the x-axis as two sides of the rectangle, and then your starting point back to where you want to begin to find your information. Okay? We'll go over uh, one more of these on Monday. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Make sure that these notes are complete for then. And so I hope that now we're able to learn to graph a real-world scenario in Quadrant 1 and interpret data from the graph. If you have any questions, Please write them down in your notes so that we can go over them together in class.